Welcome to History Inside a Nutshell, the show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. In today's video, we're going to be looking at two hidden gems that had a connection to one of the world's most famous ships. However, these carriages are in great danger of being scrapped. And in response to this, I thought that I would do a video on this to make sure the word gets out there. And who better to narrate it than my friend Canel, who is going to be narrating the video about these two treasure troves. And so without further ado, I'll leave it all to Carnell. Hi, I'm Connell Scholar, and I'm here to read you the Titanic's boat, train carriages, history and restoration. Hope you enjoy. On 2nd of January 2023, ITV News and the Daily Mail published articles sharing a story about a discovery that occurred in 2021. This discovery was two lost dining salon carriages found languishing at a heritage railway centre in South Wales. These weren't just vintage carriages since they had connections to the Titanic. It's believed that the carriages were part of the London and South Western Railway. The railway had a boat train express, which transported the vessel's passengers from London Waterloo Station to Southampton Docks before transferring onto the ship following a 3 hour and 30 minute journey. They were part of two special boat trains that took all first, second and third class passengers before the Titanic began her maiden voyage. On Wednesday, 10th of April 1912, a large group of second and third class passengers and a few first class passengers with their valets and maids gathered on platform 12 at London Waterloo Station on board the Boat Train Express, which would take them to Southampton and then to the Titanic. The station and the staff who were that day would have witnessed the passengers either going away on a mini holiday or saying goodbye to London as most third class passengers began immigrating to America. Most would never see their homeland again, and one can imagine the emotion passengers felt as they hopped onto the train. The train with all three classes left London Waterloo Station at 7.30am before arriving at Southampton Docks between 9.30 to 11.30am. Upon arrival, all three classes boarded separate entrances and third class passengers had to be checked for trachoma, which is no bacterial infection. Back at London Waterloo Station, a second train began to depart at 8 a.m., carrying only first-class passengers when they arrived in Southampton at 11.30 a.m. Both train journeys in total took roughly two and a half hours. The Titanic set sail for New York at noon. Tragically, many people who boarded these carriages would see the last steps and sighting of dry land. During the golden age of train and maritime travel, UK shipping companies would connect with the London and South Western Railway for special transportation that would run the services from London to Southampton. This special transportation would be known as the Boats Train Express. LSWR's London Waterloo boat trains have been running services since 1856 for connection with the Union Line steamers to Cape Town. The railway company had strong business relations with shipping companies like the White Star Line. In operation to continue the train service, the LSWR purchased the Southampton Dock Company in 1892. Upon the company's purchase, the LSWR company spent over 3 million to expand the docks and make further refurbishments. By 1912, a graving dock was installed and warehouses were built around the port. In June 1907, White Star began to get ready for the construction of the new Olympic class liners for their transatlantic services. The company moved its premier services, transferring from Liverpool to Southampton. However, White Star would continue to run some boat express train services from London to Liverpool. A year later, the company established their services, which would schedule its ships to sail to New York every Wednesday. With scheduled dates and times, where ships depart in the early afternoon, like what happened on a Titanic's maiden voyage. But to make sure passengers would reach their destination on time, the LSWR would run a tight schedule, making sure the first boat train leave London Waterloo Station at 7.30am before the second, which is referred to as the White Star Express or the late breakfast train, and that would leave an hour later. When passengers would arrive on the day of a ship's departure, the trains would arrive at Southampton Terminus, where the trains would then cross Commute Road and into the White Star Dock. 
If passengers decided to board a train at night before their scheduled departure, then earlier trains would stop at the Southwestern Hotel, where passengers would stay overnight. What did the carriages look like at the time of the maiden voyage and what was available for passengers traveling inside them? The two carriages or the salons were part of the LSWR 4132 boat train and according to the heritage site, both carriages were identified as the 7.30 a.m. express train. The salons would hold all three classes and on board. Passengers would be treated to a breakfast dining salon service under the name Bougie Restaurant Composite. The salons would have multi-class seating sections and in the middle of the carriages there was a kitchen and a pantry which had a connecting corridor for waiters to walk to and from the multi-class seating areas. Inside there will be 11 seats first class for passengers and 17 for second and third class passengers bringing the total seating to 28. Going into further detail about the carriages, the Titanic Boat Heritage Trust states that the first class area contained two bays. Their nearest the corridor, the connection having one on one and two on one seating, with the second bay having two on one and two on one seating. A total of 11 individual seats, all with tables. The third class accommodation was similar, apart from there is an additional two on one, two on bay at the inner end. And with the four seater sides of the two inner bays comprising two two seater bench type seats, the latter also applied to the innermost seating of the end bay. First class compartments were finished with wainscot oak or figured walnut, fascius and saintwood panels. The seats were trimmed with figured moquette, dark blue and dark green cloth, morocco leather or buffalo hide. The second and third class compartments are finished with polished mahogany and plywood panels with figured plus trimmings. The actual trimmings did however vary from batch to batch and over time. The carriages were steam heated and had electric fans for ventilation. There are electric lights which could be set at half or full from a control panel in the pantry and also there were passenger communication bells throughout the carriage that went through to an indicator panel also in the pantry. The side drop windows were arranged so that when partially down the opening was covered with very fine copper wire gaze to prevent soot and grit from getting in when traveling. The ventilators when open were similarly covered. The heritage then goes into the description of the kitchens. The kitchen was fitted with the latest cooking range from Slater Stone. Sink in both the pantry and kitchen was fed with hot and cold water. Water is stored in an 80 gallon insulated tank in the roof above the pantry. There were preparation tables, cupboards, plate racks and other storage facilities including a refrigerator located in the corridor behind the inner bulkhead of the third class area. The floor in the kitchen and pantry was covered in lead lead to prevent juices, oils, fats, etc. damaging the wooden floorboards beneath. The use of lead for this purpose was once common. Fish fans, for example, were once lined internally in the same manner to help improve ventilation instead of doors to the corridor, bosswood gates, folding lattice were provided that enabled air to freely circulate to the corridor when the salon was not in use. On the outside of the carriage, the inscription Dinah Salon was carried on a waistline towards both ends and both sides, but the precise position varied per side for reasons symmetry of other body side features. To improve the steadiness of running from part way through the second back mid-1907, the Dinah Salons were mounted on new bogies that had additional outer side frames referred to as LSWR wide frame dreadnought bogies. The saloon carriages went on to have a big career after the Titanic disaster, but there is so much to include in, we haven't really got the time to include all of them. If you would like to have a look at the history, I will leave a link in the description box down below. But without your help, the carriages may be lost to history. And right now, the Titanic Boat Heritage Trust is looking for donations to help restore the coaches and get them up and running again. If you would like to donate to help restore the carriages, a link to the heritage donation page will be also in the description box down below. But if you can't donate but would like to share the video, please feel free to do so. The more word we get out there, the better.